This is part two, and today we're going to be talking about series. So, as we saw from the end of last time, a series is a sum of the terms of a sequence a of n from n equals 1 to infinity. Well, uh, you could say that, but also you could say it like this. If we have some uh, sequence, A of n, for simplicity, let's do a... Actually, no. Because I love torturing myself, let's do a 2 to the n. Plus 2. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, if we have A to the n like this, we have term 1... Term 2, term 3, term 4, term 1 is going to be 4, 2 plus 2, term 2 is going to be 6, 4 plus 2, term 3 is going to be 10, 8 plus 2, and term 4 is going to be 18, eight, uh, 16 plus 2. So now, a se uh, the series is going to look something like this. First uh, term in the series, 4. Second term in the series, 4 plus 6 is 10. Third term in the series, 4 plus 6 plus 10 is 20. Fourth term, 4 plus 6 plus 10 plus 18 is 38. Now, what we do with the series is we determine whether it is convergent or divergent using these criteria. It converges if uh, as n approaches infinity, or we can say the sum of all terms of a of n from n equals 1 to infinity become a finite number l. You might say, how is the sum of infinite things going to be equal to a finite number? Well, think about it. If the numbers eventually become very, very small, adding them will make no significant change, which is why we get a finite number in the end. So, now, what about diamond? Well, this is what you would expect, plus minus infinity, or GNE, and we talked about this last episode. And by the way, just so that I don't have to like contort my hand, get carpal tunnel, when it doesn't cause any confusion, you can write a series like this. You don't have to put the n equals one and infinity on top when it doesn't cause confusion, remember. Okay, so now let's look at two ways that we can talk, uh, two ways that we can determine whether something is convergent or divergent. We'll see more of them in the future. The first is called a P-series test, and the second is called the nth term test. First, the P-series test. A lot of series you see will take the form 1 over n to the p, uh, where p is some sort of constant. Alternatively written is simply n to the minus p. So how can we determine whether these are convergent or divergent? Well, here's the thing. There's actually a third test called the integral test that we're also going to cover today. So what is the integral test, first of all? Well, the integral test basically says that if f of n, a function in the xy plane, is equal to a of n, so for example, 5n plus 1, and then we have a function f of x equals 5x plus 1, if f of n equals a of n, then the integral of f of n from 1 to infinity, this is what's known as an improper integral because infinity doesn't actually exist, is equal to, oh yeah, dn, is equal to sigma a of n. So, uh, I guess we could also write it this way. The limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b, f of n dn, equals uh, sigma a of n. And if you don't know, this integral notation basically says what is the area under a curve from here we have 1 to b. 
So what is the area from here to here? Okay, so and since B is approaching infinity, it's go basically going to be for one forever and on and on and on and on. So that is the integral test. Now we can prove the P uh, how the P theory test will work. Well, we know that sigma n to the minus p is going to be equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of x to the minus p dx or n to the minus p dn, whatever you want. So we can use the reverse power rule in order to integrate this. So the reverse power rule, you add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. In this case, I'm going to change it to look like this, x to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p. Don't worry, it's just rearranging the numbers. So, that means that this is going to be the limit as b approaches infinity, 1 to b. And actually, since we've already integrated, we can simply do this. This is from 1 to b. And with the reverse power rule, we have x to the 1 minus p divided by 1 minus p. And remember, p here is a constant, not a variable. Here, we're simply determining what p will be used for convergence and what p will be divergent. So, limit as b approaches infinity, now we can simply plug in. We have b to the 1 minus p over 1 minus p is the limit b approaches infinity. And then we have a constant, which we're not really concerned about. Minus 1 to the 1 minus p, and 1 to the power of anything is just going to be 1 divided by 1 minus p. So this part really isn't catastrophic. We don't have to worry about it. This part, on the other hand, we have to worry about. All right. So now, you can probably see there are two scenarios for this. One, p is greater than one. Two, p is less than or equal to one. Oh, uh, p is less than one. If p equals one, it diverges. And this is what's known as the harmonic series. One, one half, one third, one fourth, and so on. Okay, so p is greater than one. Then we have b, the limit as b approaches infinity of b to some negative constant minus n over minus n. And we don't really care about this minus 1 over 1 minus p gibberous. So we just have this, and that's going to be minus 1 over nb to the minus n, the limit as b approaches infinity. Well, not b to the minus n, b to the n. Now, it's probably obvious here, but as b approaches infinity, this is going to get smaller and smaller and eventually approach zero. So that means when p is greater than one, we have convergence. But what about if p is less than one? Then we have b to the one minus p is going to be some positive constant n, of the limit as b approaches infinity, divided by n, and we don't care about the minus one over one minus p. Now, and we've talked about this before, but any exponential b to the n is going to grow way faster than n if b is greater than one. And here, b is approaching infinity, so we know it's going to grow incredibly fast, which means that this is going to approach infinity. That means it diverges if p is less than 1. And it also diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. Sorry. So, that's the p series. And now, one more thing, the nth term test. The nth term test basically says, if the limit as n approaches infinity of a sequence a of n is not equal to 0, then the series sigma a of n diverges. Probably because that means that we're going to be adding a finite uh, a number to the infinite sum forever and ever and ever, and that's going to reach infinity. So, however, this does not mean 
that if this is true, even if this is true, a sigma event does not necessarily converge. It can still diverge if the limit that approaches infinity is equal to zero. We're just saying that if it's not equal to zero, we know it has to diverge. It cannot converge.